Welcome back to Onsign TV Expert Tips. If you're running a restaurant, an app which you can't go without is our casual menu board app. Your menu has never looked so mouthwatering. This app is data feed enabled, so we first need to bring your menu into a data feed to run it. The benefit of a data feed is that once you have it compiled, you can use it for other apps as well. Checking the requirements here, we can see which input is needed. The minimum is one text column, nothing more. Everything else is optional. This makes the casual menu board app versatile for other table form use cases as well, but let's stick to a menu as our prime use case. Now let's create a new data feed. Click on manual data feed, or you can import one from source if you already have all the information gathered elsewhere. I'll go into my data feed and the first column I'll create is item name, set type as text. And if you need a note for other users who might be editing this at a later point, you can include a note here. That's all we need to run the app, but for the sake of the preview, by clicking on new column here, I'll whip up some more columns as well and assign the appropriate types to them. Lastly, you may want to create the item icon column. As most columns here, this is an optional column. Maybe you want to highlight a dish as gluten-free, vegan, spicy, or alcoholic, for example. You can take your own designs or browse in an icon library. These are some great sources of icons. Just download the icons you need. The creator specifies if the icons can be used freely or with attribution. It should be a PNG or alternatively JPG file. Many icons are SVG files, but can't be used here. Also, the icon field has to be an image type. Most columns here are text, the price is a number type, and the item icon and special offer image are the image types. The item subtitle explains the dish a bit more. There is a column for currency symbols, but if you use the same currency for your whole menu, you can insert your currency symbol in the app as the default currency symbol. So you only have to type it once. Now I quickly fill in these columns with various menu items to demonstrate. There we go. As you can see here, the menu app has a special offer section, which highlights one item at a time. That's why we need the image column here to showcase that special dish. In order for the menu app to know which item is on special offer, we need to add a toggle column. Create a new column, set the type to toggle. Now tick the items that are on special offer and they'll appear one by one in rotation in the app. Now that we have all the content we need, let's head back into the app settings. Select your data feed here. You'll see all the columns are assigned automatically, so we'll accept that. Just be sure to double check in case something gets mixed up. On the bottom, you can disable your special offers, and you can also enable them to appear both in the special offer section and in the text section. By default, special offers won't be shown in the menu itself because they're already taking up space in the special offers section. A very important number to tweak is the number of lines per column, and I'd suggest changing this each time you remove or add a new item. You can have up to seven items in one column, but be sure to divide the items nicely so the menu isn't misaligned, or you end up with a lonely single item on a whole page, like this. In my example, I have 13 items. Three of these are special offers, so they won't appear in the columns. They'll appear in the image section. This leaves me with 10 items in my menu columns. I want a nice clean division, so I'll set the number to five per column. You can tweak the app further, though these defaults are mostly good as they are. Of course, adjust the colors to your brand. You can even put a background image here. It only shows if the main or background colors are a degree of transparency. I also wouldn't advise a background image if it's a very colorful image. You might accidentally make some of the text unreadable. Check out the language tab of the app settings to overwrite the labels in your language. At the very bottom, you can tick a few boxes for additional settings. As we said, here you'll disable special offers as well as make them appear on the menu. You can also eliminate animations. In case you work with a currency that doesn't rely on decimal points, you can tick this box to remove them. 
Here are some extra tips to make your menu look perfect. When selecting images for your special offer, make sure the item is at the very center, especially when using vertical images, and it might be best to stick to the horizontal images, by the way. Keep your subtitles short. Usually the first five words will be shown in the special offer, so each word counts. This might feel restricting, but it's stopping you from adding too much text to the menu. The more words you add to your subtitle, the font in the menu columns will shrink to fit it all in. For this reason, in your subtitle column, limit the maximum text length. Limiting the text to 60 characters is a good start, and to get an idea, this sentence here is just under 60 characters. And that's it for this expert tip. I'll see you in the next one.